like a hell cut. Before we get started, I have a favor. If you enjoy my content and want to see me continue to improve in both quality and size, please check out my Patreon link in the description. Any amount helps and it is greatly appreciated. There are so many rewards for each level of donation, so go check it out. Now back to the video. Hey guys, this is Matthew the Avenger and welcome back to StarCraft 2. Uh, today there's something quite interesting. They have added, uh, uh, in addition to in custom games, there's now a campaign section, which is freaking awesome. Unfortunately, I don't play co-op with anybody, so yeah. They have added prestiges to every single one of the commanders. How prestige will work is you go into the customization, activate prestige, and reset your commander level to zero. You can rank back to 15. With each of them you get four, you get the normal version and then three others. So in this video, I'm just going to show you what they are. I'm not going to play them because I don't like most of them. There's like two, two or three that I like in the whole collection. So yeah. Jim Rayner, his normal one is Renegade Commander. His new one, well, his first new one is uh, Backwater Sheriff. Uh, the advantage biological combat units gain 100% increased life, which is kind of good, but then it loses mules. I don't really like that because I use mules quite a bit. But if I had to choose any of these, it would it'd probably be that one. Next one is Rough Rider. Advantage, ap advantage Afterburners additionally increases attack speed by 100%, cooldown reduced by 50%. Uh, disadvantage units no longer cost less afterburner movement speed reduce by uh, speed bonus reduced by 50 percent i don't use afterburner so that won't help me at all next one is rebel raider starports no longer has tech requirement or gas cost oh gas cost i didn't read that one its unit cost is 30 percent less gas vikings banshees and battle cruisers increase top bar cooldown rates by one percent per supply used that one's decent too. The disadvantages combat units cost 50% more. Which means no gas, but more minerals. That I, that's okay. I don't like it though. I need to. I thought I already added these. Actually, I probably hit cancel. That's why it didn't do anything. Next one we have is Kerrigan. Yeah, I, I definitely accidentally hit cancel instead of apply. So, first one, of course, is Queen of Blades. Next one is Malevolent, Ma Malevolent Matriarch. Advantage, Malevolent Creep Effectiveness increased by 100%. Nidus and Omega Worm Networks are unavailable as a disadvantage. That one might be fine. I don't use Nidus Networks often, so that might be good for me. Overall, I don't really know. Folly of Man, Advantage, Kerrigan expends Stacks of Fury Stacks of Fury. While using Leaping Strike and Psionic Shift. Striking nearby enemies for 50 damage. Ooh! That's decent, but then disadvantages. Uh, she... The external health that she get is reduced by 50%. And her ability damage is reduced by 50%. The disadvantages are the main turnoff of all these, obviously. But some of them were just too much for me to give in to. Um, and then for Desolate Queen, advantage. Assimilation aura uh, <coughs> resources drop increased by 100%. Kerrigan gains kinetic blast and crushing grip. I like that one. I actually really like that one. Though, because those are the two that I, <laughs> those kinetic blast and crushing grip are actually the two I use in the campaign, so I might actually go with that one. Um, I don't know. Let's move on to the next one. Artanis, hierarch of the Daylom. So his other one is uh, Valorous Ins Inspirator. Inspir Inspirator. I can't pronounce things. Can't read bad at it i don't i'm bad at english uh advantage increases the effectiveness of all active combat units abilities by 100 percent disadvantage combat units cost 30 percent more yeah nexus legate nexus legate nexus legate i don't know advantage upon use projected power field warp uh warps out any of your combat units standing in 
in an existing power field projection to location. So it's... That one's actually not bad. That allows you to have sort of a... Uh, uh, just a reverse mass recall. That's pretty good, actually. I might go for that one. Uh, orbital strike warps in uh, an un... Orbital strike warps in an unbound fanatic that throws off damaging energy in last 15 seconds. Uh, overchar uh, shield overcharge is now targeted and has and its cooldown has been reduced by 50% and the cost is 25 energy. Orbital strike cost increased by 50 energy and guardian shell is able to I don't like that one. I wonder what the unbound fanatic is. I'll have to check that out at some point. Um... <laughs> The unfortunate thing is I can't just open an account and try them out because I have to be at max level to prestige. So, for Swan, his uh, first one is Heavy Weapon Specialist. Laser Drill, di laser drill deals spa splash damage, I can't speak, and slows. Disadvantage has no abilities. I don't like that. I use it for its abilities. Grease Monkey. Advantage. Turret upgrades are 100% uh, more effective. Combat units cost 50% more Vesping Gas. That one might be good. If I have to go for it, I had to choose prestige, that would be it. Uh, advantage. Hercules have uh, payload director. Hercules, Hercules's, Hercu Hercules's. I don't know. Have twice the cargo capacity and unload units instantaneously. Tactical jump cooldown reduced by fifty percent. And the top bar cooldowns are increased by hundred percent. So that's just an overall bad one. I don't like that one. That one's just overall bad. All right. Now we get to Zagara. Scourge Queen. Max supply increased by 50%. Zerglings and Scourges spawn one extra per egg, so four Zerglings. That's pretty good. Uh, Baneling Nest will spawn an additional four free Banelings and uh, Scourges. Scourge Nest will spawn four free Scourges. That... Besides it removes Zagara. That's a really good one besides the fact that it removes Zagara. Mother of Constructs. Uh... Advantage, Aberrations and uh, Corruptors cost 25% uh, less, gain 50% increased health, and uh, possess greatly increased health regeneration. No free Banelings is the disadvantage. Apex Predator, Zagara gains reduced ability, cooldown, increased health and energy regeneration, and access to deep tunnel ability. Mass Frenzy only uh, affects Zagara and her summoned units. Combat units cost 25% more. I don't like any of the Zagara ones. I'm going to go ahead and max all this stuff out, so if I ever play any of them, I will remember. Next, we get to Vorazun. Vorazun. Matriarch of Nerezim. Her first one is Spirit of Respite. Emergency Recall uh, recalls cloaked units to the closest nexus to Dark Pylon, set the primary structure, and heals life and structures to full. Deploy Dark Pylon cooldown and cost reduced by 50%. Disadvantage Dark Pylon loses recall. I don't use re <laughs> I don't use recall. So, um, that's good. I like this one. Get get more Dark Pylons. Uh, Withering Siphon. Advantage. Enemy units affected by Void Stasis Confusion, Stasis Ward, Disruption Web, or Dark Recoil lose 25 life per second. This effect cannot kill. Combat units still 50% reduced damage. Stasis Ward duration reduced by 75%. I don't like that one. Uh, advantage. Time stop becomes targeted and all shadow all shadow guard who have died are resurrected at the target location. That's pretty good. Shadow guard duration reduced by 40%. Mm. I like that one most. If I have to choose one, top one I like most. Next we have the Karax. It's funny is none of Karax is really played towards his playstyle and it's kind of funny. Uh, Kalai... Face myth. First one's Architect of War. Repair beam is 100% more effective and cannot and can target twice as many structures. Unity barrier affects defensive structures and its cooldown is reduced by 75%. Chrono boost, Chrono wave, and Chrono field affect defensive structures, increasing the rate of attack. That one actually, I misread that one. That one's really good. Repair beam may only target structures. Unity barrier no longer affects units. I actually like that one, um, because <laughs> when I go Karak's, I don't have any units anyway, so that's actually really good. I like the one. All right, Templar Apparent, Apparent, Templar Apparent. Advantage, combat unit uh, cost reduced by 40%, but <laughs> it disables the defensive structures. 
Yeah, not good. Uh, Solar Rite Celestial. Orbital Strike and Solar Lance energy costs reduced by 40%. Solar Lance and Purifier Beam cooldown reduced by 50%. Chrono Boost, Chrono Wave, and Chrono Field are unavailable. Yeah. I like the Architect of War. That one I actually will get. I, I, I like that. It might screw over my teammates with the Repair Beam. But I'm selfish like that. Alrighty, let's uh, max him out real quick. Uh, I might have to try out some of these. I might have to try out one of these in like the mutation mission that I'm going to record later today. I haven't actually seen what that is yet, so yeah. Next we get to Abathur. Uh, Evolution Master. Essence Hoarder. Combat units hold additional 25 biomass and additional 50% chance to drop their biomass upon death. Ultimate evolutions are unavailable, unfortunately. I don't like that one. Tunneling Horror. Locusts have 50% increased attack range, movement speed, and duration. Deep Tone Upgrade no longer requires the Hive, no longer requires Vision, and can be used by Roaches and Ravagers. Combat unit costs increased by 25% Vespian Gas. I don't like that one. Limitless is pretty good. The number of Ultimate Evolutions is no longer capped at 3. Ultimate Evolutions now require 200 Biomass, and it is less powerful. It's reduced by 50%, obviously. I do like that one because um, I always have a stockpile of biomass all over the map. So this one is really good. Let's max him out as we're doing. Okay, next one is High Lord Alarak. Um, Artificer of Souls. Advantage. When a supplicant dies, it increases the damage and attack speed of one of Alarak's nearby non-heroic mechanical combat units. Uh, deadly Charge Destructive Wave deal 50% less damage. I don't like that one. Empower me. Cooldown reduced by 50%. Death Fleet is unavailable. Shadow Death is a really good one. Shadow Death has no duration. Or, Death Fleet has no duration. It can last as long as you want it to. Um, the Fleet... Damage dealt and vitals are reduced by 50%, which makes sense if they can be up constantly. Um, the cooldown is increased by 100%, and the mass teleport is now has a 60 second cooldown, no longer teleports allied units. I don't use any of that, so I probably will get this one for Alarak. It's a really good one. Next, we get to Nova Soldier of Fortune. Barracks uh, unit charges a cure 100% uh, faster while factory and separate units are cure. 50% slower. I obviously don't play Nova a lot because I don't have any. Of, I don't have any of these things. Um, next one is Tactical Dispatcher. Advantage. Uh, tactical airlift cooldown reduced by 75%. Griffin airstrike is unavailable. Don't like that one. Nova gains a permanent super cloak. Her abilities have been uh, have a 50% increase in radius. And 50% reduced cooldown. But now she cannot switch between her combat suits and loses her super cloak for 4 seconds upon attacking or using snipe. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I, I, I would use that one if I had to. Next we get Stukov. The Infested Admiral. Uh, Frightful Flesh Welder. Factories and starports no longer have tech requirements. Mechanical combat units cost 30% less. The disadvantage is infected colonist compounds do not spawn and cannot be built. That's a sucky one. Plague Warden. Banshees are uh, can load up to 16 infested infantry and can launch their cargo at ground units. Infested civilians have a 30% reduced time. Uh, lifetime. This one is a decent one. Not so good. Uh, I don't like these procedures at all. I'm being entirely honest. Not, there's only like a couple of them that I actually like. Overall, they're not good. Next one is uh, Lord of the Horde. Infested bunkers spawn infested troopers 200% faster. So, three times as fast. It's pretty good. Uh, disadvantage. Infested bunkers no longer have cargo capacity. That's a decent give and take. Phoenix. Purifier Executor. Akondalar? Akondalar! Don't know what that is. Uh, advantage. All armor suits damage increased by 50, uh, by 100%. Ability cooldown reduced by 50%. Life shields and energy regeneration increased by seven, by 100% while in storage. Um, all armor suit cooldowns are increased 
by 700%, and each suit could only be sustained for 20 seconds at a time. That's a bad, that, that, that's a bad disadvantage. Network Administrator. Tactical data web effectiveness increased by 200%. All combat units costs 50% less. What is that? Hold on, what is that? Tactical data web. I don't know what tactical data web is. Each AI champion's special ability gains a bonus for each active host shell of the same type. Non-heroic combat units uh, damage reduced by 50% and bottles are reduced by 50%. That isn't bad if you have an absolute crap ton of soldiers. And combat units are cheaper. That's actually not bad at all. Uh, and Unwavering Vindicator. Advantage. Vinging Protocol effectiveness increases by 100%. AI champions that die refund 75% of their base unit caught. Ooh. That's pretty good. Um, AI champions cannot gain additional life or shields and have reduced attack range. Hmm. I was, that was good, and then it turned bad. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Next one is the Haka. I like the Haka. So, Primal Pack Leader. Devouring one. Devour applies uh, its benefits to all nearby friendly units. Uh, but his disadvantage, he has zero base armor, loses scourge, uh, this loses the scorching, s scorching, Breath ability and his max level is reduced by five or by four. If it was reduced by three, I'd be fine because I don't ever use Scorching Breath. Next one is Primal Contender. Pack leaders and their entourage deal 50% more damage and have 100% increased life. Pack leader cooldown reduced by 33%. Pack leaders can consume essence for the Haka. The Haka exit the map while pack leaders are active. Only one pack leader may be active at a time. Final one I really like. Dahaka spawns a clone. If either Dahaka or the clone dies, the other dies as well. Each is each of their max health is reduced by 35%. So overall, they have more health. So I think I think that's overall a really good trade-off. Next we get to Mira Han and Matt Horner. Chaotic power couple. Magmines arm and fire 80% faster. Mira's units on death affect more uh, death affects are 100% more effective. Horner's unit costs 30% more. Winged Commanders. Horner's unit's Vespine, ga uh, ca Vespine gas costs reduced by 20% and charge cooldown reduced by 50%. Galleons are capped at 2. That's a bad one. <laughs> um, Galactic Gunrunner. Bombing platforms are no longer capped. Bombing platforms cost 100% more. That's fine. I guess. <laughs> Not really, but it's fine. Next, we get to uh, Tychus. I don't really like any of his. Uh, technical Recruiter. Outlaw's active ability cooldowns reduced by 35%. Outlaw's cost and time between Outlaw recruitment increased by 50%. I don't like that because I already run into not being able to buy, not being able to max out because I just can't afford it because I don't get minerals fast enough. Lone Wolf. Outlaws deal 200% more damage and take 50% less damage. Uh, when beyond the vision range of all of the outlaws. So you can send them on solo missions. Uh, ultimate gear is unavailable. Gear costs 25% more. Once again, costs too much. Um, Odin no longer requires Tychus as a pilot. Uh, his duration is increased by 100% cooldown reduced by 40%, but it has no barrage or big red button. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of it, if you ask me. Zeratul. Um, he has... A knock soon. A knock soon. A knock soon. I don't know. Zeratul can deploy Void Seeker, granting all friendly units a super cloak for 15 seconds. Void Seeker can no longer transfer Zeratul. That's a good one. Because I rarely use Void Seeker anyway. Knowledge Seeker. Zeratul can collect an unlimited number of artifact fragments. Zeratul's combat units. We'll just unplug. Zeratul's combat units cost 25% more. Herald of the Void. Um, wait. What was the number of... 
That one's actually... Those are both really good. Uh, each collected artifact... Herald of the Void. Each collected artifact fragment reduces the cooldown of Zeratul's Shadow Cleave by 5 seconds. Shadow Cleave spawns a tornado that damages and slows enemies. He can only collect two. I like the elemental, so that's bad. Stentman. Hero Genius. Uh, signals... Uh, Signal Savant. Satellites are invulnerable once they're online. Satellites generate uh, generate a 50% larger stat zone. Super Gary is unavailable. That immediately makes it bad. Best Buddies. Gary's health and damage increase by 100%. Gary's movement speed is reduced by 90% while outside stat zones. That's bad because it nerfs Gary. Combat units gain a stack of best oil when they kill an enemy unit. Combat units cost 40% more minerals. Mech Infestors are unavailable. I don't like that. <laughs> If it makes it cost more, I don't like it. Lastly, we get to Arcturus Minsk. I think this is the only one I haven't actually read through all of them. We're about to find out, though. Toxic Tyrants. Contaminated Strike Fear lasts 200% longer. It's over, uh, damage over time effects additionally increase damage uh, received by 100%. Its cost is reduced by 20%, and its cooldown is reduced by 66%. Troopers provide Imperial support while... Operating Earth Splitter Ordnance. Nuclear Annihilation is unavailable. I don't play a lot of Minx, so I'm not sure how good any of that is. World Guard Vespin Gas cost reduced by 25% and XP gain increased by 100%. World Guard Mineral cost increased by 100%. Ooh. And Supply cost increased by 50%. I don't like that. Uh, I like having as many units as possible, so increasing supply even more is not good. Equipped Troopers activate a self-destruct mechanism in their weapons upon death. Troopers' weapons cost 40 minerals and 20 Vespin gas. Troopers no longer drop weapons. Imperial uh, Intercessors are unavailable. That's not good. I don't like... I don't, there's a lot of these I don't like. There's some that I like, some I love, others I hate. But what do you guys think? Do you like these new this new mastery system? I think it's freaking awesome. Feel free to tell me to comment. <laughs> it's awesome. A lot of them are horrible, but the ones that I like, I really like. Tell me what your opinion is in the comment section below. As always, thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. You can follow me on my socials. Keep it the channel, go to Discord, join a conversation, go to Patreon if you feel like supporting me. Spencer the Avenger, have a nice day. Stay safe. Peace out.